Welcome to Success as a Leader. This program is sponsored by the World Health Organization and its purpose is to clarify the expectations the organization has of you as a leader. In order for you to complete this program, you will need 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. You will also need a copy of the Leadership Inventory, the Learning Package Notes page for this module, access to staff regulations and rules, and a pen, pencil, or something else that you can use to write with. There are two sets of goals for this program, module goals and your specific goals. Let's review module goals first. They are recognize the roles and responsibilities of a leader in our organization, recognize your own strengths and developmental areas in carrying out your role, Identify policies, procedures, and guidelines that supervisors must uphold for ethical and respectful behavior. Establish work and behavior standards for your own team and demonstrate and model behaviors that are consistent with our values. The second set of goals, which are your specific goals, would involve what you want to learn about your leadership role. And if you met with your manager before this program, what, if anything, did your manager describe as being important to your role? An important question that comes up in every leadership program is, what value does a leader possess? One view on the value of leadership involves one individual achieving the overall results through coordinated efforts of many individuals. This involves ease of communication, individualized motivation, and alignment across the organization. Let's start our exploration of leadership by taking a closer look at what is expected of you. Specifically, what's expected of you by your supervisor and what's expected of you by your direct reports. Take a few minutes now, stop this program, and answer these two questions in the learning package. When we review expectations, what we find is that one of the commonalities that supervisors and direct reports have is that they see the leader as an advocate. The leader will advocate in three ways. The first way is to advocate for themselves, specifically to achieve individual work objectives and to implement their own developmental plan. The second way they advocate is for staff. They'll garner resources that are required to complete the assigned task. They'll monitor and provide feedback on the individual's performance. The third way that they advocate is for the organization, aligning the staff to meet strategic direction, modeling organizational values, and ensuring consistent application of staff rules. Let's take a look at how to ensure the success of a leader. This involves three sets of competencies, core, managerial, and leadership. Under the core set of competencies, we're looking at things such as communicating in a credible and effective way, knowing and managing yourself, producing results, moving forward in a changing dynamic environment, fostering integration and teamwork along the way, respecting and promoting individual and cultural differences, and setting an example. Under managerial competencies, there's three things that we look for. Creating an empowering and motivating environment, ensuring the effective use of resources, and building and promoting partnerships across the organization and beyond. The last set of competencies under leadership would be driving the World Health Organization to a successful future, promoting individual and organizational learning, and promoting World Health Organization's position in health leadership. It's important to keep in mind that as a leader, your behavior should be consistent with World Health Organization agendas, specifically around promoting development, fostering health security, strengthening health systems, harnessing research, information, and evidence, enhancing partnerships, and finally, improving performance. Up to this point, we've reviewed values, agendas, competencies, and expectations. 
What I'd like to do now is give you an opportunity to apply the information that we've covered. In order to do this, you will need the staff regulations and rules that we suggested you have available at the beginning of this program. You will be given a series of four situations where you will review the situation and then refer to the staff regulations and rules. Now the purpose and scope of this activity is to review some of the fundamental conditions of service, the basic rights, duties, and obligations of the WHO Secretariat staff, and the broad principles of personal policy. In this activity, you're going to be given four different situations. Specifically, what we'd like you to look at is how would you apply the rules and regulations that are appropriate in a number of areas. The content of these four situations involves duties, obligations, and privileges, recruitment and appointment, attendance and leave, staff relations, disciplinary measures, special employment conditions, to name just a few. What I'd like you to do right now is if you haven't taken out your staff rules, please get that document at this moment. Okay, let's look at the first situation. This involves Alexander. The situation is Alexander's wife gave birth to their first child 11 months ago. At that time, he took four weeks of paternity leave as soon as the child was born. He's now come to you, and he'd like to take an additional two weeks of leave. So the first question is, may he do this? And the second question is, which staff rules apply? Take a moment now to look at the staff rules and identify which of the staff rules applies and does he have permission to do this. So in the case of Alexander, the answer is, unless there are exceptional circumstances, Alexander may not do this. And this applies to Staff Rule 763, Paternity Leave. In this next situation, Ileana is a staff member who's leaving the organization in two months. The reason for that is her spouse has taken a new position and she has to relocate with him. She would like to use her current supervisor as a reference as she looks for new employment. So the two questions are, may her supervisor give a verbal or written reference, and what staff rule applies? Stop the training program now. The answer in this situation is that Ileana may request a certification of service from her supervisor in writing. The certificate will relate to the nature of her duties and the length of her service, and it will also refer to the quality of her performance and official conduct. This is Staff Rule 1095. Our next situation deals with Juan Ho. He has been in a continuous appointment post for four years and eight months. The post will be abolished in three months due to budget cuts. Juan Ho is seeking a reassignment. The first question is, what are some of the actions that the Director General will take and which staff rule provides guidance on this process? Stop the training program now and jot down your answers. The answer to the situation would involve reasonable efforts being taken to reassign Juan Ho. Some of these efforts could include training to enhance specific qualifications, the reference we would use here is Staff Rule 1050.2. So how well did you do? Were you able to identify the appropriate answers? Were you able to identify the rules that were most appropriate in each one of those situations? Ultimately, you're going to be responsible for your own development as a leader. And one of the ways to identify what works and what you need to develop is going to be based on getting information from other people. And there's two ways to get more information. One way would be to ask the individuals you work with directly about how well you're doing. Or two, take an indirect approach by talking to people who have actually seen you or observed situations where you have worked with individuals in the organization. 
Let's take a look at a couple of the ways you can get direct feedback. The first one is rather obvious. Talk to the people who, you, who are affected by the situations or decisions that you make. A second one would be to complete an assessment, specifically a 360-degree multi-rater feedback instrument that would provide you information from your manager, your peers, and your direct reports. There are also other assessments and tests that you can take that would give you an idea of how well you've mastered each one of the competencies or skills that are critical for leaders to develop. And then the last one would be to take a simulation, which is basically put yourself in a situation that you would handle at work to see what kind of decisions and what kind of results would be created. In terms of indirect feedback, you could talk to people who've actually seen you interact with other people. You could also look at how you're measured in terms of being able to hit the targets and the deadlines that you're being given um, within the organization. And the third would be to look at how you could modify your approach and what would be the effect on those people who would be directly impacted by it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to give you an opportunity to do some self-assessment at this point in time. If you remember back at the beginning of the program, we mentioned that there was a leadership assessment that you would need to have available. So let's take a look at what you see your strengths are as a leader. So take a moment now to stop the training program and complete the leadership inventory, being as open and as honest as you can. As you completed your leadership self-assessment, some questions may have come to mind in terms of how accurate is the information that you were referring to. Personally, what I've discovered over the years is I think I do pretty well on the job and at the same time, I don't really have an accurate picture as to how effective I am. The best way to determine my effectiveness is to talk to those people who either I work with day to day or who have seen me working with other people. With that in mind, what we'd like to do is we'd like to suggest that you schedule an opportunity to talk to your supervisor about getting more information on your leadership competencies. We've put together an agenda that has five points that we'd recommend that you cover. I'm going to review that with you, and then you're actually going to see a demonstration uh, on video so that you could see and hear what this conversation would actually look like. The first point in the agenda is to open and frame the conversation and basically what we mean by that is to help your supervisor understand what you're looking for, what kind of information would be helpful, and what you're going to do with it. The second point is to start the whole process off by sharing your self-perceptions in terms of how well you think you do when you're interacting with other people. This will be helpful for your supervisor to get an idea of what kind of information you're looking for and also it's easier for them to comment or react to something versus to create something for themselves. The third point would be then to ask your supervisor for their reactions. You know, how accurate is your self-perception? And this will give them an opportunity to start to give you feedback. The fourth point is to ask them for additional insights or perceptions that maybe you haven't shared with them. And a good question would be, what else would be helpful for me to know about the way I work with other people? And then we would suggest that you wrap the whole conversation up by summarizing and setting up some kind of follow-up action. Something along the lines of, thank you, and here's what I'd like to do next. As you keep these points in mind. We'd like you to watch the demonstration and then be prepared to share your thoughts about what did you see the leader do in this video? What did you hear the leader say in this conversation with their supervisor? And what was the reaction of the other person? My supervisor Terry's in today. I thought of using this as an opportunity to maybe get some feedback on how he sees my performance and how I'm doing and if there's anything additional that I could do to improve my work. Hi, 
Terry. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by to see me. Hi. Good seeing you again. I'm a little jet lagged. I just got in from Geneva. Juan told me that the conference went very well. It did. I have some action items to take care of, but uh, I understand you want some information from me. Yes, I did, and thanks for stopping by. I wanted to get some input from you around how I'm performing in my managerial responsibilities. Oh, one of those conversations. Right. Now, I just wanted to get some feedback from you on my performance to determine how am I doing? Are there some areas that I need to improve and to get some feedback on what should I continue to do, what am I doing well, and where I might need some additional help. I made a few notes. Is this a good time? Sure, this is fine. I have about 15 minutes before I have to get on the phone with Dr. Tripler. We're on a conference call. Yes, remember at my performance review discussion, we talked about a few areas you'd like to see me improve, such as my delegation skills, and my not being too hands-on with the staff. I hope from my perspective that that's improving and that you've noticed it too. For example, I have Betsy working with me on a project around editing and proofing the next proposal that's coming up. It's really taking me some time to outline what I need from her so that she can do well on the project too. It's also freeing me up to do some things that I really need to do. But before I talk about any other examples, I'd like to hear from you. Are, are you seeing me be more delegating than directive? Yes, you're actually involving others far more than in the past. Um, it, it's beneficial to us in a lot of ways. One way is beneficial is it puts you in a leadership role, but it also helps us get our talent groomed for assuming new roles and responsibilities. You see that as an advantage to me in the group? Yes, of course. Some other things that I think that I could do better are... So we've talked about a few of my thoughts and ideas. Is there anything else that you would suggest or recommend that I could do to be better? Well, I wasn't totally prepared for this conversation. Um, however, in thinking, about, in thinking about the topic, one thing that might be beneficial would be to give others more lead time when you've made a request. You see that I could give more time to handle those requests? Yes, especially when others are so busy. Are there any other suggestions or recommendations? Sure. When I asked you to get the statistics on childhood obesity from the regions and, and suggested that you involve Mika in helping you with that project, you gave her the assignment, which was great, and you involved her and engaged her in the process, which was great. I think you gave her too little time to get the task accomplished because you sat on my request for a few days and then she only had less than a week's time to get back with the data. That put her under pressure. Yes, it did. I can see where at times I get caught up in the day-to-day -day work activities and sometimes lose sight of what really has to be done right away. I can get better at that. I really don't have anything else to, to mention at this time, but if there's anything else, I'll certainly bring it to your attention. Thanks, Terry. This discussion has been very helpful. I'd like to follow up from here on. Why not after the next meeting, I check back in with you, see how I'm doing, get some input, and if there are areas where I need to improve, we could discuss that then. That's fine, and if there's anything else, I'll certainly let you know. I know that, Terry, but I don't want to leave that responsibility to you. I'd like to follow up and make sure that I also am very active in this part, too. Well, that's great. I have to go get my call right now. So now that you've had an opportunity to see what this conversation would look like and to hear how it would actually go, I'd like to ask if there were some things that you noticed. First of all, did you notice the leader following the agenda in order to get more information from their supervisor? So did they cover the five points? Did you notice there was a balance in the interaction between the leader and the supervisor in terms of the way the dialogue and the conversation went? Did you notice that the tone of the conversation was very supportive and neutral? And lastly, did you notice the focus that the leader had, which was on getting information on ways they could improve their ability to meet others' expectations? How well this conversation goes between you and your supervisor will be impacted by the
the relationship that you currently have with them and the fact that you've had these kind of feedback conversations previously. To wrap up this uh, training program, I'd like to just review four of the key takeaways that we hope you're leaving with. First of all, your most important role is to get results through other people. The way you do that will help you be more successful if you model the competencies and values that we've highlighted in this program. A key thing to keep in mind is being consistent in the way you apply staff rules in your interactions with your direct reports. And lastly, the best way to know how you are meeting expectations is to ask other people, both the people who report to you and your supervisor.